Okay, let's take a look at this basic algebra word problem. And the problem would go something like this. A car traveled uh, three miles in five minutes. How fast is the car going? So this is a pretty classic, typical type of problem that all algebra students are going to run into. Probably might even might see this in like at the pre-algebra level, maybe even the middle school level, certainly high school level and beyond. So if you want to go ahead and try to solve this, go ahead and do so and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to do this problem in a way where you don't need a calculator. If you want to use a calculator, that's fine, but I would challenge you to not use your calculator because you're going to run into problems like, like this on tests or quizzes where you may not be able to use your calculator. In this particular problem, you can uh, solve without the aid of a calculator, but what you do need is absolute knowledge of algebra and some other important things that you're certainly going to need to understand if you're going to do well with these kind of word problems. So we're going to get to this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, if you're struggling in math, you can do much, much better. Okay, so please do not give up hope. What you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and most importantly, comprehensive. You need more than just a quick little tutorial video. You need full instruction, a lot of solved problems, and this is where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school or high school or college level, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you are uh, preparing for some sort of test with the math section, there's a ton of them out there. Things like the GED, SAT, GRE, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, please check out my full programs for middle and high school mathematics for homeschoolers. I've gotten excellent reviews over the years. By the way, if you need a pair of uh, comprehensive math notes, I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video. Note-taking is critical for your success in mathematics, so if you're not taking great notes, you need to start. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to my channel, as this definitely helps me out. But let's get into this word prompt. Again, I'm going to do this in such a way where we're not going to use a calculator, but if you feel like, yeah, I'll just use a calculator, as long as you can solve this, that's what counts. Again, uh, you can put your answer into the comment section, but let's go ahead and start off by looking at what's going on here. So anytime you are looking at any word problem in algebra, the best thing to do is, of course, you may not have this kind of uh, little visual model given to you. You might be uh, told, like, a car traveled three miles in five minutes. How fast is the vehicle going? Now, just for, you know, to kind of spruce up this video, I kind of drew this out, but you may have to um, draw yourself a nice little sketch of what's going on, okay? So that's the first thing you want to do when it comes to word problems, but actually, that's not the first thing. So I kind of like, um, <laughs> kind of need to correct myself. The first thing you need to do when you're tackling any word problem is read, okay? Read the problem and then read it again and really make sure you have a good sense of what's going on. Now, what you need to do is build yourself some sort of graphical model, okay? Because it's a nice, uh, it's much easier to be able to solve things when you have some sort of model to kind of study. So this is our uh, model. Of course, I already wrote it out here for us. And what we have is we have uh, the distance this car traveled. We have the time, okay, it took to cover that amount of distance. And the question is, uh, how fast is this vehicle going? And uh, there is a fancy word that you want to kind of remember, and that is rate. Okay, so how fast is like, what's the speed? There's all kinds of different uh, words out there. Velocity is another word. And you might run into the, uh, these words, but uh, rate, okay, uh, especially for those of you who are in algebra courses, you need to remember this word, okay, rate, all right? Now, again, it's the same thing effectively as speed and velocity. There's some technical difference for those of you out there studying physics, but I want you to know that we're looking for the rate, okay? When you hear this word right here, this means speed, okay, or velocity. So that's what we're looking for. We have the time and we have the distance. So we need to um, have some sort of way to relate the rate of something, the time, and the distance. We need a formula, okay? And uh, that's what we're going to have to uh, um, have in order to solve this problem. So in mathematics, okay, when especially when it comes to um, 
word problems, there are certain formulas that you will really need to commit to memory. And you may, you may not be given this particular formula for this problem in the class, okay? Your teacher may expect you to, like, you know, remember it. So my question to you is, what is the formula that kind of relates uh, the rate, time, and distance? Well, hopefully you said, well, is it rate times time equals distance? And if you said that, I must go ahead and just give you a nice little happy face as you're absolutely correct. This is a very important relationship, okay? You need to understand this formula. Rate times time is equal to distance, okay? Again, rate is the speed or the velocity of something. Then we have time and then we have distance as kind of indicated in an uh, example like this. But we have some additional twists here, okay? So let's go ahead and continue to build upon this. So we know what formula that we're going to be uh, needing. Rate times time is equal to distance. But here is um, kind of the next kind of level to understanding this problem. So the distance is miles, okay? Our time here is in minutes. So how fast is this car going? Now, uh, let me ask you, uh, and this is probably probably the majority of the people watching my videos might be in the U.S. or maybe Canada or whatnot. I'm not quite sure in Canada, but certainly in the United States. When we talk about the speed of a car, okay, how do you indicate the speed of a car, right? Hopefully, you're saying, ah, miles per hour, right? Like this car might be going 70 miles per hour. Now, you do have kilometers per hour in um, uh, you know, the metric system, but I'm going to be sticking with miles per hour. Okay. But it doesn't make a difference whether it's miles per hour or another, uh, unit of measure. We need to have a unit of measure to answer this question. So how fast, well, we have to have some sort of uh, measure here, right? So I'm going to be using miles per hour. Of course you can have kilometers per hour or, you know, meters per second, but you need to be aware of uh, what unit of measure. Now, sometimes in a word problem, I might say, well, answer the question in, you know, how many miles per hour is this vehicle going? But here's the next level of this problem, okay? We need to make sure that all of our information that we use in this formula is going to give us uh, the rate, okay? That's what we're looking for in miles per hour, okay? So how do we know whether the time and the distance is in the correct units of measure for us to get uh, miles per hour. Well, let's go ahead and talk about that now, okay? All right, so if we want miles per hour as our rate, and that's what I want because that's what we're used to when we're, we're talking about the speed or velocity of vehicles, is, um, uh, again, miles per hour. That means miles per hour, okay? This little P here, means a fraction, okay, miles per hour. Now, I'm taking the time to explain this to you because I really want you to have a thorough understanding of how to use this formula, okay? There's a lot of little twists here. I could quickly do this and give you the answer, but that's not really teaching you anything. What I'm trying to do is to try to get you to master this stuff. All right, so miles per hour, this is what we want. So uh, this is what we call a rate, okay? A rate is a fraction where the numerator and denominator have different units of measure. So here, I'm comparing miles, okay, which is distance to time hours. So in order for me to get uh, my answer miles per hour, I must be using uh, miles as my distance, and I must be using uh, hours as my time, okay? So my time here must be expressed in hours, and my distance must be expressed in miles, okay? So now when we think about this problem, we can see here that uh, our um, time is not in hours. So this is where we're going to have to take some additional steps. So let's go ahead and continue to build um, the, our, uh, you know, the process to really understand this problem and solve it. So again, how fast? Well, we want our answer in miles per hour. So that means I need my distance in miles, so which I, this is good, okay? I don't have it in feet or some other units of measure. So I have miles, excellent, okay? So that's three miles, but here I have five minutes. Now I want hours, okay? I have minutes, so I'm gonna have to figure out um, how many, um, uh, how, much, how much of an hour is five minutes. So this right here, five minutes, that, um, time, okay, that unit of measure for time is not uh, what we want, okay? We, we need to express five minutes 
as an hour. So that brings me to my next question for you. How do we convert five minutes to an hour? Okay, this is basic conversion, basic mathematics. So you're starting to see a lot of different uh, kind of additional, you know, sub uh, skills and concepts that you need in, to, in order to answer this question correctly. Okay, so my question to you is how many hours is five minutes? How much of an hour? Okay, or five minutes is how many? How many hours? Okay, it's of course a part of one hour, but let's go ahead and convert that now. All right, so this is the way you convert units of measure. So if we want to go from minutes to hours, of course we know that one hour is 60 minutes. We know this, right? One hour is 60 minutes, but of course, you know, this is just an equivalency that we know. We need what we call a conversion factor. And what you want to do is express this as a fraction, okay? We have one hour per 60 minutes. Now, we could have uh, 60 minutes is per one hour, okay? You do not want to use this, although this is technically correct, we want to use this one hour per 60 minutes where the 60 is in uh, the denominator. So, you, you know, again, there's a lot of little things going on here that you have to be paying attention to to do this problem confidently. So now let's go ahead and uh, multiply, all right, uh, our five minutes by this conversion factor, and this will convert, um, this will give us um, our five minutes in terms of an hour. So we have a fraction here, so five minutes or five minutes over one times one hour over 60 is going to be what? Well, five minutes times one hour, so this will be our numerator. This is how you remember uh, multiply fractions, numerator times numerator, and then we have denominator times denominator, so that's going to be one times 60 minutes. So I'm really breaking this down because I want you to understand the big picture here, okay? So this is really, really important. So we have five minutes times one hour over 60 minutes. Now notice what happens right here. Let me kind of erase this. Notice what's going to cross cancel. The minutes are going to cross cancel. So the minutes go away. Okay, these units of measure um, are eliminated. One minute to one minute goes away and I'm left with what? Hours, okay? That's what we want. So now we have the fraction five over 60, okay? This is gonna be in hours, and I can reduce five over 60 as 1 12th, so this is 1 12th hours, okay? So five minutes is equal to 1 12th of an hour, all right? Very, very important that you fully understand conversion factors. Now imagine if I multiplied Actually, let me just uh, do this real quick right here. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you can see if he said, well, five minutes, um, uh, I'll multiply that by the conversion factor, 60 minutes over one hour. Now, although this is a correct conversion, it's not the proper one here because minutes won't cross cancel. You're going to end up with minutes times minutes squared, okay? So when you're confused about which conversion factor, remember, you want to get what you're trying to eliminate, one in the one of those measures in the numerator, the other in the denominator. So here you're like, oh yeah, if I put minutes down in the denominator, that would cross cancel with minutes in the numerator. That's how you know to use this conversion factor and not this one. This is a very, very um, common place where students mess up these problems, okay? So again, I'm really breaking this down so you can understand this. So now we know our time is 1 12th of an hour. So now let's put this together now. Okay, so how fast is this vehicle going, vehicle going miles per hour? Well, I need uh, miles and I need hours. So I have miles now, okay? This car went three miles and I have my time as 1 12th of an hour. So the uh, 1 12th of an hour. So the vehicle went 1 12th of an hour, covered three miles in 1 12th of an hour. Let me say it that way. All right, now finally, finally, we're ready to go ahead and solve the problem. So here's our formula, rate times time is equal to distance. I'm trying to solve for how fast is the car going, which is the rate. I have the time, which is 1 12th of an hour. I have the distance, which is three miles. So I'm just gonna plug in right here and we'll put our units of measure at the end. So R times 1 12th is equal to three. So how do I solve for R? The easiest way to solve this type of equation is simply multiply by the reciprocal of this fraction, which is 12 over one. So we don't have to solve basic equations. Again, that's another little skill that you're gonna to have to brush up on. So we have uh, 12 over one times R times 1 12th. You can see the 12s here. This would be 12 over 12 or one R or R is equal to uh, three times 12 over one, 
which of course is 36, but 36 what? 36 miles per hour. That's how fast the vehicle is going. So did you get this right? Well, if you got this right, I must give you a nice little lovely happy face and A++. Matter of fact, I'll give you like 150%. I know a lot of schools, you can get extra credit. So I'm going to give you 150%. And matter of fact, I'm going to give you multiple stars. If you were in my class, I would just tell you to go home. I would send you your A++ and the report card. And I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. You must be watching that guy on YouTube. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and check this problem right here real quick. So it uh, looks like the vehicle is going 36 miles per hour. But let's just check this again with our formula. Rate times times equals distance. So if it's going 36 miles per hour and it went five minutes, okay, again, it's going to go five minutes, but I would convert that five minutes to hours, okay? So we know already know that five minutes is one twelfth of an hour. Would we get three miles? Well, let's take a look and see. So again, notice how I'm breaking down these units of measure because this is very important. So 36 miles per hour, MPH, is miles per hour. All right, so this is, we have this fraction here, our rate times our time, 36 miles per hour times one over 12th of an hour. This hour is in the numerator. You're going to have 36 miles per times hours over our hours times 12 or 12 hours. So what cross cancels here? Hours cross cancel. I'm left with miles. 36 divided by 12 is what? Well, 36 divided by 12 is 3, and we ended up with the correct units of measure. So our distance is 3 miles. And of course, that's what we had right up here in our uh, word problem. This all makes sense. So the car went 5 minutes or 1 12th of an hour, covered 3 miles. It's going 36 miles per hour. Okay, so that's what we solved for. So yes, indeed. Okay, um, mathematics, algebra, you know, that's why a lot of people, when they see word problems, they typically have this expression. They're like this, you know, sad. They don't want to handle it. Listen, uh, really, word problems are excellent um, exercises to cover and review all the little sub-skills and things that you need to know. So in order to get better at word problems, the best way to do uh, uh, to get better at anything is to do more of word problems, okay? Tackle more word problems. But the main idea here is whatever you don't understand, stop, clear up your un, you know confusion about something, and then you know that's how you're going to improve. You just can't do a bunch of problems over and over and over, you know, confused. That's not going to get you anywhere. Do one problem nice and slow. Make sure you understand it, and then keep doing more variety, more challenging type of problems. So if you need help with word problems, I have um, a ton of word problems in my algebra courses. So whether that be pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, college algebra. Uh, just check out my math help program. You will see a ton. Also, I have additional word problems on my YouTube channel as well that you can check you can check out. But if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.